hello to everyone. Uh, I know that you, you participated in some big event. We, I just want you to keep abreast of uh, the Security Council uh, discussions today. Uh, we had quite a thorough discussion on uh, UNOVAS. Uh, it was a unanimity of uh, members and those of you who followed uh, the deliberations uh, in the open chamber, you actually heard everything, but the council members want me to uh, give uh, you the, the following update on uh, their position. So I will just read it out for you, uh, and then if you have any questions, I will answer. Uh, council members commend, uh, commended the special representative of the Secretary General and head of UN Office for West Africa and the Sahel, Dr. Mohammed Ibn Chambas, for his continued efforts to promote peace and stability in uh, the subregion, in close cooperation with relevant subregional and regional organizations, which has contributed to positive progress uh, in several West African countries. They encourage UNOVAS to continue its efforts in the areas of mediation, good offices, early warning, and prevention action. Council members expressed their concerns over remaining security challenges, including the threat of terrorism and violent extremism as and when conducive to terrorism in the Lake Chad Basin and in the Sahel regions in their linkages to transnational organized crime. They stressed on the need to combat terrorism, including by addressing conditions conducive to its spread. Council members uh, welcomed international efforts to mobilize support to the G5 Sahel Joint uh, Force and progress made in the oper uh, operationalization, I'm sorry, of the multinational joint task force. Council members expressed concern over widespread food insecurity, forced displacement, and adverse effects of climate change and ecological changes, among other factors, having negative impacts on the stability of the region and called on the international community to support the provision of urgent humanitarian assistance for the population in need in the Lake Chad Basin and the Sahel regions. Council members encouraged accelerating the implementation of the UN Integrated Strategy for Sahel and further developing an integrated strategy for the Lake Chad Basin region. This is the press elements which I'm authorized to say from my uh, own point of view. Uh, it was a very good discussion about a uh, more integrated approach on the side of the uh, UN structures, regional organizations to work on uh, the development security issues in uh, the you know, very volatile uh, region. So now uh, I'm ready to answer your questions. Can you say, it's Pamela Falk from CBS News, can you say something about the meeting briefing you had with General H.R. McMaster at the U.S. mission about Afghanistan? And since 11 ambassadors have indicated uh, in one way or another that they are going on a mission to Afghanistan, could you tell us a little bit about it and if, if Kazakhstan is leading that mission? Thank you. Um, you know, as for the briefing which uh, was organized by the U.S. mission uh, with participation of uh, uh, security, uh, national security advisor, uh, uh, General McMaster, I think it was uh, a very good event and timely event because um, uh, he presented the U.S. strategy uh, with regards to Afghanistan. Uh, and it's uh, very much uh, in line uh, with what Kazakhstan thinks about it, and I think it was a shared opinion among other uh, colleagues that we need uh, to have a more, uh, uh, you know, comprehensive approach to uh, work in Afghanistan uh, with the regional partners, uh, with uh, the other interested countries to help Afghanistan from the security point of view and from development point of view, because uh, today security and development is becoming uh, very interrelated uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, so uh, I should say that it was a very good discussion about the policies, uh, the regional policies, about the uh, situation in Afghanistan and how we can be helpful all together, uh, Security Council and other interested countries uh, in that area. 
Uh, I would probably don't comment on uh, each and every country's uh, position, but I think it was a united feeling that uh, Afghanistan needs support, and uh, the mission which uh, all of us are talking about is, is the one to show the solidarity with Afghan people, uh, to show uh, them that the international community cares about what is happening there. Uh, terrorism, you know, drug trafficking, uh, organized crime, all of it uh, is present, but what we see today uh, in that country, in, in that region, that there is a movement to have a more integrated approach to that. So we have to uh, see Afghanistan more integrated in the region, in the regional trade, regional connectivity, which can help uh, Afghanistan uh, to become a not a, like a threat, to, not to be perceived like a threat, but as a attractive uh, partner to uh, the regional countries. So this is kind of a positive agenda which we have to work, but at the same time, of course, the security challenges uh, are there, and uh, we have to deal with them, to tackle them. But I think that today we have to a little bit change the paradigm and talk about more development, uh, just going together with the security uh, efforts of different countries. Uh, is there any role for the UN in Taliban government negotiations uh, for, for peace talks or anything else? Uh, at this point of time, uh, we haven't discussed uh, this issue, so I cannot comment on it. Uh, from uh, my national perspective, I can say that, you know, there is a, uh, a, a very distinct development within Afghanistan to find the ways uh, how to bring Taliban into the negotiating table. If Taliban is receptive to this, uh, of course it will lead to the uh, a better situation in the country. Uh, so the government today is very active in uh, working on that issue. So at this point of time, uh, we think that uh, it should be Afghan-led, Afghan-owned process. Uh, and we as an international community can help them in achieving that goal. On, on West Africa, uh, I, in the chamber it seemed like some people were, were, had positive words for mediation in Togo. And I wanted to know if in the consultations, I mean protesters have actually been getting killed there, peaceful protesters, whether there was a more detailed discussion. And also in, in Nigeria, which is another country that the, the office covers, there was an abduction of nine southern Cameroonian uh, leaders right from Abuja out of a hotel. Did Mr. Chambas bring this up? Did anyone bring this up? And is anything being done, to your knowledge, by the UN about that abduction? Absolutely. Uh, that issues were discussed and discussed uh, in a very uh, constructive and uh, uh, substantive ways. Uh, Dr. Chambers answered the questions which were posed to him, and uh, our African colleagues were very active in uh, raising that issues. And all of us are very much uh, willing to be part of this, you know, uh, progress in that issue. As for Togo in particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, we think that the elections should be uh, held in that country in order to uh, overcome the impasse which is uh, existing there, which could really help that country to uh, take more uh, progressive uh, path of development. Uh, so I, I will, will, will not go into details of what was discussed, but uh, in general, the issue was raised, uh, and uh, it was discussed, and uh, I th I'm, I'm sure that uh, Mr. Chambers coming back to the region will pick up on that issues and will work on them. Uh, at least that was his intentions, uh, and uh, I think all of those countries which are in the area uh, are in uh, great focus of his attention, and everybody was very much pleased with his work was his uh, way of approaching that. And uh, we see that uh, economically, this region is growing, though there are some, of course, security challenges, which uh, all the countries understand that we need to work with it. And Dr. Chambers is very much uh, uh, having his own hand on it. And we very much welcomed his uh, uh, delicate, but very uh, concrete work 
which he is doing there. And uh, what we see today in West Africa, it's more positive signals coming from there rather than negative ones. Ambassador, uh, just to follow up my colleague's uh, Pamela question on Afghanistan, um, are you, uh, is Kazakhstan leading this mission? Because you mentioned a lot of times it's a priority and in this month program of work uh, Afghanistan is on the agenda. Uh, or is the U.S. mission? Uh, no, it's a Kazakhstan-led mission. Uh, we worked on this mission for already some time, uh, actually from the very beginning of our uh, Security Council uh, membership. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, uh, we think it's important for Security Council members uh, to get the update uh, of the situation uh, from the ground. Uh, we would like them to fill uh, the situation there and uh, actually work with uh, the Afghan government uh, with full understanding of what are the needs, what are the prospects of it, so this uh, mission, we would like to be kind of a, uh, one of the important ones, you know, uh, seven years there was no any mission to Afghanistan, and uh, this is the first one. Um, but uh, when you ask me whether we're going or not, uh, you know, uh, I am a little superstitious person. Uh, until we get on the plane, I won't uh, tell you anything. Uh, after return, uh, if we go there, uh, of course, I would, uh, organize a press conference and we will uh, tell you for sure what happened during that uh, mission. But at this point of time, I just prefer not to comment on it uh, because it's too early for me to say something. Mr. Ambassador, Luke Vargas with Talk Media News, American News Radio. Uh, as you're, I'm sure you're aware, there's a delegation from the DPRK that plans to attend next month's Winter Olympics. Is the Council aware of any ways in which this visit may interfere with existing sanctions on the DPRK? And if so, are you working with the ROK and the IOC to make sure this visit can go ahead? Uh, actually, yesterday I have already uh, gave the statement which Security Council authorized me to do. Uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, if you asked about the general mood, it's a positive mood about this. We welcome uh, those positive steps. Uh, we hope that uh, uh, this Olympic team going to uh, South Korea will open a new opportunity for both of the countries to solidify uh, their um, you know, peace negotiations, peace discussions, uh, which could as we all hope, uh, will bring to denuclearization of Korean Peninsula. Uh, as for the sanctions, at this point of time, I cannot comment on it. Uh, if anything could be done, it, it should be done according to the rules of the you know, uh, committees which are working on that. So at this point of time, I cannot comment on it. Sorry. Yes, Mr. Ambassador Stefano Vaccara, Radio Radical in Rome, La Voce in New York. About the meeting for West Africa and Sahel, um, on the security aspect, how do you see the work of the Security Council about the human trafficking that is going through the route? Because um, there is enough coordination on the way countries are acting. I mean, we know that there are countries, think, you know, many countries are doing, trying to stop that, um, going to an agreement with single countries to try to help them or not. And I, my question is, how much the Security Council is coordinating this effort or thinks that maybe should be, there should be more coordination in this effort to stop the human trafficking? You know, we, uh, I think everybody uh, understands that it's, uh, what is necessary today is more coordination rather than less coordination. Uh, uh, you, uh, Security Council is very much on the top of all of those issues and uh, here in the statement you can see it, it's rather long and uh, wide on issues which they, we touch upon there. Uh, uh, we know that the migration is one of the issues uh, in that region and uh, you know uh, UN Security Council and the regional organizations and commissions, we are ready to work together to coordinate that actions. Uh, you know, we, we need to work on it, it's clear. Uh, how we can do it on the ground, I think it's uh, the issue which the countries themselves have has to agree, uh, have to agree upon. 
uh, but we would like to assist uh, this process because we understand that uh, the migration issue is one of the important ones. I cannot give you more details on that. I think the general mood is to work on these issues, help where we can, and uh, assist uh, the uh, regional organizations there, which are very much uh, involved with that. Anna G. Health, did Mr. Chambas indicate what progress is being made and is Chad still a player in the G5 Sahel force given that it's dropped out of the Lake Chad Basin group? Thanks. Uh, you know, probably you heard in the open chamber, uh, my colleague Takeda was commenting on, on that issue, saying that uh, the contribution of Chad is of very uh, great significance, so we should not uh, forget about it, we should not disregard it. So uh, I think he was very eloquent on that. I just don't want to repeat uh, his words here. Who, Chambas' words? No, Takeda yeah, spoke yeah. Oh, about it. Uh, did Mr. Chambas talk about it in the closed session? Uh, about uh, Dr. Chambers actually gave uh, an overall picture of what is going on in the region. And he uh, mentioned some positive developments like Liberia elections, uh, and we have uh, the perspective of Sierra Leone, uh, uh, which are also going for the elections. Uh, the general idea was that we need to support the positive developments in the region and uh, contribute to that, capitalize on it. Uh, and uh, he was telling about, he was asking for more international community being uh, collectively involved with that and help uh, this process. Thank you. Thank you very much.